Hi everyone, it's Penny Black and Jill Foster here for a new PB&J card class. And this is a continuation of my nautical themed paint with me one layer cards. Now this one's a little bit more than one layer, just a touch I cheated a bit, but here's a look at the card that we will be creating today. This is a really clean and simple card that is so fun to create and is such a great card to send to a friend or a loved one to let them know how happy you are to have them in your life. So the stamps that I will be using today are from our set 30-843 seashells. It features the stamps and the sentiments used on today's card. Now before we begin, I just wanted to mention I will have a full supply list up on screen at the end of the video. So if you want to check out anything in more details, the stamps, the colors, the inks, everything will be listed up on screen and you can just hit pause to check it out in more detail. Now to paint this in, I am using Distress Ink Reinkers used as watercolors. So I just have a uh, cheapo plastic palette here and I'm putting just tiny little drop of reinker color onto the palette. Now like I said, all of the exact colors that I am using will be listed up on screen in that supply list. So if you want to paint along or get some ideas of what colors exactly I've used, they are listed on screen. I'm just filling up my palette here and you really only need like the tiniest little drop especially if it's a darker color and these are very highly pigmented and will go on nice and bold even with just a tiny little drop in your palette. So I'll set those off to the side here and zoom in and get ready to paint. Now I pre-stamped my image onto Canson 140 pound watercolor paper using Memento Desert Sand ink and I've got my water and my napkin off to the side and yes that is a Wonder Woman cup that I use for my water. <laughs> that was a gift from my sister-in-law and I just love using it for my painting water cup. <laughs> so I love using this particular ink, paper, and Distress Ink Reinker combo because when you add these paints right on top of what you've stamped, what you've stamped sort of just seems to take on the color of the paint that is going on top of it. So you can get a no line watercolor look, which is essentially making it look like you've hand painted this or hand drawn it as opposed to being something that's like stamped in black and colored in in a very easy way. There's no straining to try and see what you're painting because it's stamped so light or having to go back in and draw any details in because you can still see them with these particular Distress Ink Reinkers used as paints on top. So I put a very light gray down and now I'm going to add some blue. Now with shells and starfish and especially when they're really whimsically drawn like this, you can really play around with what Ever color scheme makes you happy. I just wanted something sort of sort of just soft and um, blue and fresh for this particular card. So I'm just layering on. I started with my lighter colors and then I'm adding my darker ones in. Now when I blend, sometimes I go in, I rinse off my paintbrush and then I almost always pat it onto that napkin to dry it off a bit before I go in and pick up my next color. And that way I have quite a bit of control because there's not too much water on my paintbrush. So if you find when you're watercoloring or painting that it just seems like, ah, oh, there's too much paint or things are flowing and moving all over the place more than you want them to, it might just be because you have too much water on your brush. So grab, I, I cannot paint without having a napkin or paper towel or something right there to sort of dry off my paintbrush. Now what's fun with this is I sort of got out all my favorite blues and turquoises and added them in. I am trying to be somewhat careful though not to let those blues cross over too close to those yellowish colors because I didn't want it to turn green green like grass green. So that's just something to be aware of as you're painting. Now I went ahead and dried this using my heat gun. You could also just wait and let it air dry if you have more patience than I do. And I am going to just add a little bit of a background shadow here. And just this little touch, really all of a sudden this looks three dimensional. It looks like it is popping off the page even though it is just 
flat right on the paper. And when you're doing a very simple card such as this, at least for me, I find that this little touches like this are what make the card look finished and make it look um, just make it look done as opposed to just having that starfish how it looked before I added this little tiniest touch of background painting here this shadow to this starfish and I had so much fun painting this because as soon as I did it I was like oh look it's starting to look like it's popping off the page and had that like oh this is so fun excitement moment I don't know do you get that when you are stamping or working on something where you just get so excited when something works out the way that you wanted it to you'll have to let me know in the comment section below now I also wanted to have just a very loose sort of shadowy background off to the side here so I tried to restrain myself and not perfectly blend things to let them remain a little bit blotchy with some white in there so you could see I just added some paint and then I add a little water to it to let it move around and blend a little bit and I'm continuing with the same process over on this side This was so fun and easy to paint. I could see doing like a whole background covered in these starfish and then you could have maybe one that's a little bit different color and you could use that sentiment, I'm so happy I found you, um, or a sentiment about someone being special or unique. That would also be another fun way to use these stamps. You don't have to use these just as like a summertime kind of stamping because the message that goes with it is to me is what is important and that can be used year round. So I'm going to dry that background painting that I did. And I'm also just adding a few splatters here. And if they go where you don't want them, if the color's light enough, you can kind of mop them up there with a wet brush. Um, so it's pretty forgiving. Splattering can be kind of scary, especially if you're really happy with how things are so far. So if you start with a light color, you can kind of go in and um, like that. I was like, oh, I don't like that. So I could add some water to it and sort of blend it out and remove it not make it quite as bold. So I'm going to dry that because I was happy with how that looked. Now I stamped a second starfish onto a separate piece of paper because I wanted to give this card, it's nearly one layer, but I wanted to give it just a little bit of dimension since it is so simple. So I am going to paint the second starfish using the same, uh, very similar look as I did the first one. But when I'm done, I will go ahead and fussy cut it out and I can add it to the front of the card using some dimensional foam squares. And that way it's just popped up a little bit and it can kind of overlap on the other star. And so it just is that little touch sometimes that makes a card a little bit more special. And also, I am not a huge fan of masking. And I wanted to have two of these starfish on this card, but I didn't want to mask mask one and stamp the second one. So I would much rather like fussy cut out this star, especially it's super easy, smooth lines to fussy cut and layer it on top than um, mess around with masking. I don't know why it's not a big deal to do masking, but this is just my pref personal preference. So I'm just adding these colors in. This is one is just a little bit darker and richer than the other starfish. So it's just slightly different, but the main tones are the same. Now this is just some Arteza gouache paint. I'm squeezing it right from the tube because I want it to be the thickest and most opaque. As it dries on the palette, you can always re-wet it and that will, um, you can still use that as a white, but it won't be quite as thick and opaque once it's dried and you've re-wet it. Now I did real quickly there add a little bit of 
a brown ink using an ink blending tool and a foam pad around the outer edge of the starfish just to hide any imperfections in my cutting. And then I'm just painting in these white dots and also adding a little bit of this mixed with water to the starfish for some texture. And I'm going to lay that across the card, mix that gouache paint with some water, and also splatter some white onto the background. And again, if I get it where I don't want it, I can pick it up and blend it out, sort of mop it up with a brush. You can see there where I popped up one of those starfish and stamped my sentiment from that same stamp set. And here's a look at the finished card. This is a four and a quarter by five and a half inch standard size card. I sure hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also ring the bell so you're notified every time we upload a new video. And you can connect with Penny Black on Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, as well as Instagram, our website, and our blog. And I'll link all of those for you, including the stamp set, down in the YouTube description box below. And here is the supply list as promised. Happy stamping!